Don't follow mainstream media advice. In this episode, I'm going to address the best financial advice. Don't follow the herd. I am so grateful I learned that and you're going to see why as I share with you some insights that most of the time, if you follow the herd, you will regret it. So what do I know? <laughs> I'm Doug Andrew and I've been a financial strategist and a retirement planning specialist and an entrepreneur now for four and a half decades. And the best advice I ever received from, was from a good friend, Dan Sullivan. And uh, he has coached over 6,000 of the world's top entrepreneurs. And one day he said, Doug, don't ever follow the herd and don't listen to the mainstream media because they are part of the herd. Well, that resonated because I had actually been helping many, many people learn that and not follow the herd with traditional ways of saving for retirement and, and managing real estate and so forth. So I was viewed more as a contrarian, but it has helped many, many people achieve financial independence. And they look back and go, wow, I'm so glad when people said, well, what? I always thought, well, how come everybody isn't doing it? Well, hello. <laughs> Why isn't everybody, you know, super healthy, super this or super that? Because if you only do something because everybody else is doing it, frankly, I have discovered that just sort of fosters mediocrity you're just average. It's only when I almost went the exact opposite. I didn't follow conventional wisdom that I soared. So that's general advice. But in this particular episode, we're talking about finances or money. So when we talk about not following the herd, what uh, does the media tell you to do with your money to save for retirement? Oh, you want to put money in traditional IRAs or 401ks. Uh, uh, you want to make sure you put in the maximum amount you can in the company's 401k. And uh, you're going to likely be in a lower bracket when you retire. They repeat this old adage, you know, for years. And do you know that the financial services industry secretly admitted about five years ago? Oh, uh, most people are not in lower tax brackets when they retire. Um, so that was poor advice. But still, they dupe most Americans, 91% of Americans, to still put money in traditional IRAs or 401ks, knowing that they will likely not be paying less in taxes during retirement. Now, I thought a fiduciary was somebody who is supposed to look out for your best interest. And yet for years, I've seen them see that, oh, this person is a saver. Uh, yeah, they have a big nest egg. Um, they're not gonna be in a lower tax bracket. But did they tell them to do something different? No, they don't want to be blamed for not looking out for their best interest. And you wouldn't believe how many of these advisors, CPAs, tax attorneys, asset managers, they look at their clients and, and I, I say, you know what? We could uh, actually get rid of some of this tax. We could redirect otherwise payable taxes to causes they support. And you know what they say? Oh, they can afford to pay a bunch of money in tax. I had a client, they had $5 million in IRAs of 401ks. They had just been, you know, with their blinders on as physicians and they just accumulated. I go, you're going to pay, taking the accountant's advice, about $2.6 in tax from now until both of you are expected to pass away. It's called LE, life expectancy. And uh, I said, I could save you maybe $1.2 of that. And their advisor said, oh, they can afford $2.6 Look, they got $5 million. I said, well, why don't we ask them? <laughs> so we asked them and they go, well, if we can redirect 1.2 million of otherwise payable tax to our own family, yeah, we did a family bank is what I call it. And that allowed them to be able to handle in their family bank all kinds of uh, college funding and uh, humanitarian and missionary efforts, family vacations with a purpose for their posterity into perpetuity with money that would otherwise have gone down the drain in unnecessary tax. So where do most people put their money for uh, retirement in traditional IRAs or 401ks? And it's because Uncle Sam is basically their partner. I'll explain that right now. Before I share with you why Uncle Sam is your partner, 
Maybe you have noticed that there are sometimes uh, articles that come out that are sort of anti IRAs and 401ks. They're few and far between, but I, I used to publish an article that said how Congress is peddling IRA and 401k snake oil. Okay, got a lot of readers. Uh, then I remember Time Magazine came out in 2008. The cover story was why it's time to retire the 401k and do something better instead. Hmm, I wonder why. In fact, uh, Stephen Gandel was the author of that article and he said the 401k is a lousy idea, a financial flop, a rotten repository for our retirement reserves. It's because most Americans in 2008 in their IRAs or 401ks in the market lost 40% for the second time in that decade and it happened in one single year. They felt like they had lost their future for a second time. And so that's why he wrote that article. I basically said, yeah, that's bad. But the worst thing is the premise is you're going to be in a lower bracket. And that has not been true for more than 25 years. And so let's get it out and, and put it into something that's going to be tax free from now on. And a Roth could be a step in the right direction, but I've never owned uh, not only an IRA or 401k, I've never owned a Roth IRA or 401k. And on this channel, you can learn why. I'll give you a glimpse here. But see, I remember, I think it was in January of 2017 that uh, the Wall Street Journal came out with an article, the original champions of the 401k lament the day they ever came up with that idea. Why? It's because uh, the 401k was designed to be just a little bit of a side plan, a defined contribution plan, uh, because most companies back then, they, they were trying to, uh, when the 401k and the IRAs came out, they were trying to have school teachers, police officers, major corporations, they would give you a pension and a pension was a defined benefit. You work uh, for 30 years, you teach school for 30 years, you get 2% for every year of service you, you taught school. You taught, taught for 30 years, 2% times 30 is 60. You get 60% when you retire of the last best average paychecks the last five years you taught school. So if you were you know, uh, making 60,000 a year, you'd make 36,000 a year or 3,000 a month. And people thought, well, I, I can't take that much of a cut. So they would introduce a 401k where you define the contribution, but the employer doesn't want to guarantee any return. You decide where, where your contribution goes. You define how much you're going to contribute but there's no guarantee on what it will grow to. And it got out of hand. And so most Americans, they felt like they'd lost their future when most people had money just in 401ks. And twice from 2000 to 2012, they saw that nest egg dwindle in value 40%. If you had a million bucks, it went down to 600,000 two times during that decade and barely came back to break even. Now, people using the strategies that I teach, and I'm going to show you how you can get a copy of my most recent best-selling book here. They doubled and tripled their money during that 12 year period. They did not lose. And uh, their money is totally tax free, which knocks the socks off of an IRA or 401k that is only tax deferred. So uncle Sam on an IRA or 401k is your partner. If uh, you put money in your partner, you're going into business together says, okay, here's the deal. I get a third of everything uh, this will be worth at the end of the day when you sell the business, okay? And I get to call the shots. If you touch any of the money before you're 59 and a half years old, I'm gonna penalize you 10% on top of my third share. But if you don't start taking money out and paying me for, for my share of this business by age 72, uh, I'm gonna penalize you 50% on top of the tax. See. I'm describing an IRA or 401k to you. You have to start taking money out by age 72 or it's a 50% penalty on top of the tax. Did you know that? Uncle Sam's calling all the shots. And what if the partner says, and I reserve the right that if I feel like I'm more hard up than you, I can change my percentage from 33% up to 40, up to 50, up to 60%. And I get to call the shots. Let's shake. Would you go into business with a partner like that? Well, I just described an IRA or 401k to you. So what can you do? The advice is don't follow the herd. Well, the herd is the general financial services industry. Now, what I'm about to share with you, if it intrigues you and you know somebody that ought to be watching this, uh, share, 
comment, uh, click like. Uh, I would love for you to subscribe and push the little bell because I post an in-depth answer to a financial question almost on a daily basis. I don't want you to miss out. So <clears throat> following the herd, the financial services industry, they realize that most Americans who retire, who have their money in IRAs and 401ks in the market, uh, because uh, they buy and sell at the wrong times. In other words, if you bought and held, you'd probably earn 6%, maybe up to 9% based on 20-year uh, averages since the Great Depression. If you're earning 6% and you pull out the money, you're only netting 4%. In other words, a million dollars, you pull out 60, you're only netting 40,000 to buy gas and groceries. But most people aren't earning 6% because what happens? When the market, like 2001 to 2003, or the year 2008, when the market starts going down 25, 30, 30%, 30 35, 40, people panic and they go, enough already, and they pull out of the market and put their money in the bank. They're selling low. And then when the market turns around, they wait, 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 and then they buy back in high. So Dalbar, who studies investor behavior, says the average retiree with money in the market is only earning 3.49%, three and a half. So the financial services industry heard says, don't you dare, you financial advisors, show any more than a 4% payout because if people are only earning three and a half, if you give them 4%, it will slowly deplete their nest egg, but not before their LE, before they die. And we don't want to be sued for them outliving their money. If anybody pulls out more than 4%, they have to sign a waiver that uh, old harmless, they won't sue our broker dealer. That's called the 4% rule. That means a million bucks? If you have a million dollars saved, they only want you to take 40,000 a year and it's taxable. Uh, in a 25% bracket, you pull out 40,000, you pay 10,000 in tax, you're netting 30,000. Now, a lot of those asset managers charge 1% fee on the million, that's another 10 grand. After taxes and fees, it's only 20,000. Okay, let's not even talk about the fees right now. So you're earning 3%, a million dollars generating 30,000 a year? That's pretty pathetic. That's unacceptable to me. See, if I have a million in my favorite vehicle called the Laser Fund, because I didn't follow the herd, my million can generate 9% tax-free. So I pull out 90,000 out of my million and I don't have to pay tax. Uh, 90,000 is how much more than 30,000? Don't say 60. It's 300% more. It's three times as much income and it never depletes the principal because that is the net. I mean, that's what you can have by not following the herd. Is this making sense? And so I would rather have 90,000 a year of tax-free income instead of 30,000 a year of after-tax income by following the herd and keeping my money in IRAs and 401ks in the market and then taking these RMDs and 4% and payouts that the financial services industry says, nope, that's all you should take because we don't want to be sued for you outliving your money. So if you don't want to follow the herd, I would recommend you get enlightened and I'm passionate about education. This is my 11th book and uh, it's one of my favorite. It's actually two books in one. See, you flip it over. This is for left brain thinkers. This is for right brain thinkers. Uh, this has 62 stories in it. Uh, this has all the charts and graphs of how you can do something far better with your money so that you don't just follow the herd putting money in traditional IRAs or 401ks in the market and, oh, the market will always come back. Hang in there. Because people doing that, following the herd, uh, basically did not progress with their money hardly $1 in 12 years from 2000 to 2012. People who used what I call the laser fund, they doubled and even tripled their money during that time period. Read and study how you can do this. If you go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com uh, and contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling, I'll pay for the book and send it out to you. And there's also options there to listen and learn, watch and learn. But I want to empower you for your brighter future. But remember, don't follow the herd and don't listen to the mainstream media because they're part of the herd.